Howard Stern, after Suttering John had left the show, he left on good terms. And Howard Stern, eh, he was giving him some good-natured ribbing from here <laughs> and there about what he was doing on the Tonight Show. But they were still friendly. Uh, Beth and Susanna are still friends. They would still get together from time to time. And there was an issue that came up a couple of years after John left the show. He had an article come out in the Arizona Republic. And it's because he was in Phoenix or something promoting a stand-up gig or whatever the hell he was doing. And so Howard saw this article talking about how great it is to work at The Tonight Show. And Howard read all of this, read into this, all that it was like bashing working for Howard and how great it is working for Leno. And so Howard was kind of reacting to this article. Yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you this, though, Andy, this is what's really interesting about this journey, because uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit to when John went on the Adam Carolla radio show in 2008 to promote his movie, One Too Many. So at this time, we're talking about 2006, probably at okay. this time. Howard is still not angry with John per se. He's mad at Leno. Howard and Leno had a big falling out over all of this. But he's not concerned with what John is saying. And this actually sticks up for John, which is very interesting. But I pulled some, you know, Gary, him and, and John have an a interesting past. Fred does not like John. Okay. Ralph, we're going to hear, come on. He is not a, a John fan. Uh, Robin is back and forth on it. So you're going to hear a lot of different opinions here. And I love what Gary says on uh, this clip. The, all the guys are coming to tell me stuff because they're all afraid to say it. Why? But John's rap used to be that he paid his dues because he spent all those hours waiting outside of celebrity interviews. <laughs> oh, I mean, after all the questions we wrote down for him? <laughs> John's rap used to be that he paid his dues. What really? say you, dues payer? <laughs> yeah, we have a second dues payer, apparently. So they were talking about how... John acts like he had this really big career on the Howard Stern show. And Howard's going, well, I mean, look at He answered the phones. He didn't work full time. Uh, it wasn't a full time job. He came in, answered the phones, and he left. And yeah, we had him do celebrity interviews. And John thinks that because he had to wait around for these celebrities, that that uh, made it you know, a, a full time job. He was so busy with the Howard Stern show. Because what you're going to hear in a lot of this is the fact that John continually complains about what his pay was. And Howard says over and over again, this is not supposed to be a full-time job. <laughs> you, we, you came in as an intern. We didn't pay you anything. And then we found a job for you. We gave you a little bit of money. But you were not supposed to be doing this full-time. Yeah. This is just a morning show. And, you know, if you want to be here, great. If you don't, if you can make more money somewhere else, go somewhere else and make yeah. more money. <laughs> oh, I had to do something that I didn't enjoy doing. I wouldn't normally do this in my everyday life. So work was hard. That's why you get paid to do it. You're doing well, that shit that... Nobody else wants to do. And that's the thing that John, he does not understand this. When you start somewhere as an intern and they're paying you zero, they're not going to respect your time. Right. You're never going to get to a place where they're just like, well, Seth Suttering John guy's invaluable. We have to pay him whatever he wants because we can't let him go. It's like, no, 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 no. He was there as an intern. We paid him nothing. Grillo, same thing. The way that you get ahead in whatever industry you're in, whether it's radio or just show business in general, is you kind of have to, you know, you get your start and then you have to jump around and build your career. And John yeah. thought he was just, and we're going to get into this. Howard gave him a lot of opportunities. He got his own radio show on K-Rock. He got a lot of different opportunities to do things to further his career that he failed at. But the point is, you don't just get hired from an internship and then all of a sudden you're making as much money as the host or $2 million yeah. a year. It doesn't work yeah. that way. You have to prove that you're a value added and right. then and then be uh, successful at the opportunities that are presented to you, not squander them and be a miserable failure. Well, he did just the opposite. So John is talking about during in this article, he's being interviewed. He's talking about how the Tonight Show is great. It's not a toxic work environment like his previous employer. And Gary rightfully points out that uh, John was the problem. He was the reason why it was a toxic work environment. And then there's, you know, 
everybody else at the Tonight Show was wonderful. There was a lot of angst around here, apparently. He didn't really enjoy yeah, it. You know, Gary made a great point about that. Like, John goes, there was a lot of angst around here. You know, now it's such a nice environment at the Tonight Show. Yeah. The only guy creating angst was John. John loved <laughs> He created angst. He, listen, he used to write me about being pussy whipped and you know being a uh, you know and he would goof on Artie incessantly and he would make fun of everybody and then when you turn the tables back on him he would get all bummed out but no. he created most of the angst on the show so yeah. John was the shit stir he says that himself and he's like man there's a lot of angst working on the Howard Stern show yeah because of you <laughs> asshole you're the one tattletaling on everyone and, and talking about I was out with Jackie last night and he had seven beers at the Yankees game and oh I just saw Gary fell asleep on the job and he's going around tattling on everyone and they're just like geez I don't know about working with the Howard Stern show those guys are jerks over there yeah what an asshole yeah so there's a lot of things that we're going to find out as we play these clips what's fascinating about this is that nothing has changed when we think about the transformation of John, I'm talking about John, not his children, the transformation of John over these past few years as we've been scrutinizing him. He's changed a lot in his appearance, the way he talks. There's a lot of things that have changed, but his general attitude and demeanor has not. He's always been this guy. And for all the things that we talk about where John's kind of an asshole and difficult to deal with, we're going to see that this was always true going back to 1988 when they hired him as an intern. So after this, they talk about how Howard still hangs out with John because Beth and Susanna are friends. And that's really, and Howard even says, he goes, listen, I, I've, I used to hang out with John, but it's only because Beth and Susanna, like he'd come over to the house. If we had a lot of people over to the house, they'd be invited along with everyone. And, you know, may, maybe we went out for dinner every now and again, because the, the women would coordinate stuff like that. So Howard paints this picture that it wasn't really Howard and John having a friendship, which I thought was, was interesting because Howard explains when John tries to call him, Howard's not returning his phone calls. He happened to be in Vegas. He never, that same he way. never came over he to me. He said he called and he called never yeah. returned his uh, call. Oh, when, and let me ask you something. How many times have you heard John say the whole time he was working here, he called me and I didn't return his call? A million times. Exactly. <laughs> when do I sit and return John Melendez's calls? Right. I don't, I'm not really looking to hang with John Melendez. Direct and this is, <laughs> again, let me just point out, the overarching theme of this is that he doesn't have a problem with John at this point in time. And yeah. he's going, I, I don't want to hang out with the fucking guy. What do you, I'm not, we're not friends. Yeah. As long as John's not making himself a problem. Right. But that flies in the face of everything that John ever says about this, this phase of his relationship with Howard where they would be hanging out in the house. Hamptons and getting high and hammered and having a great time. We went time. jogging together. We worked <laughs> out. I went to something his house. I know. This, this is, is going to be this is going to be me. Always... This is going to be me uh, 10 years from now. <laughs> I used to come down to WATP South and yeah. Yeah, there was so, so much uh, scatological sex was had. In this is the only room, the be wall behind me that's not covered in uh, feces. <laughs> yes, put up all the dirty butt sex that I've had here. It's pretty crazy, but I will point out our wives are friends. That's the only reason why Andy For now, is in my until I'm, I'm once they're that, not. <laughs> I just I just want to say that I'm putting it out there now. So ten years from now, I can be like, I was never friends with Truck or Andy. How dare you <laughs> even imply that? So this is kind of fun because Howard explains that John's creating this controversy in this article where he's talking about he had issues with this thing and that thing, and there's a reason why John does that. Listen, a narcissist wants to think people have problems with him because then people are involved in thinking about him. I don't spend a minute thinking about John. Even back wow. then, we're going wow. back 20 years, and Howard's going, this guy's a narcissist. <laughs> He thinks that everyone is consumed with him. We're not. We don't give a fuck. He left yeah. the show. And Howard even says uh, multiple times, he goes, I was happy for him. I wished him well. The show's doing fine. We don't worry about him leaving or whatever. It's great. I'm glad he got a better opportunity. But John likes to make it seem like, and he even says this, well, when I left, they couldn't replace me. They had to get both Sale and Richard. It's like Sal and Richard do very different things than what you did on that show. They don't yeah. answer the phone. 
Well, was it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it Jason Kaplan who was the other guy that was always running around, like yes. sque- squealing on the people after, in the back room? After John left, he kind of took on that role. Yes. That was after John. Were they ever there together at the I same think time? So. I think so, but Jason Kaplan got a, a much bigger role when they moved to Sirius. Right. Okay. But so it's not like, I don't know, that John invented this culture of uh, no. Howard just like is creating problems. Right. Howard brilliantly, it was like reality TV. I guess, I mean, I'm not saying that he invented this on radio or anything like that, but he made you interested in all the ancillary characters on that show. Yeah. People that you would not give a fuck about. Scott the Engineer. You know, just a, a nothing of a person. Right. And, you know, all of a sudden we're doing a whole two weeks about Scott the Engineer and what <laughs> yeah. a loser he is. Right. And yeah. we're all captivated by it. Like, why would <laughs> anyone care? But he was great at that. So now we're going to get Ralph Sorella calling in because okay. he, he wants to weigh in on uh, Stuttering John. He, he got a very show. nice life out of it. That's right. And you think on some level he should be grateful, but That's he's right. not because he thinks he's um, spe- so special he would be there anyway without you. No, he does. Yeah. He's delusional. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Howard points out that John is delusional, and I love that Ralph, again, 20 years ago, was saying that John thinks he would have made it in show business with or without Howard Stern, because he's delusional. He doesn't understand, and John has said that himself. So yes, Ralph is spot on with that, and nothing could be further from the truth. He got hired as an intern because he stutters. Yeah. I mean, if that was the case, why are you inserting all of these celebrity friends of Howard into your music video like these right. people would never appear in anything that you put that you did solo without your relationship oh, to Howard. Oh, really? You, you don't think that Sting is just calling up John? Hey, can I do a cameo in something you're up to? Yeah, uh, I'm right. just I'm bored. I'm looking for shit to do. Yeah, I, no I, kidding. I was listening to his album. Every song is a ripoff of another. Like this is the Soundgarden ripoff song. This is the STP ripoff song. This is the Blind Melon ripoff song. They're all just aping other you know, more popular things and uh yeah after we get done with the just... book on patreon we get done with john's book which we have one more episode to go yeah i want to get into his first album <laughs> i want to start first. breaking that he down has more than one <laughs> he's three albums but there's only, there's only one on a, yeah there's only one on a major label though the I stuttering, see. stuttering john uh is on atlantic records and spoiler they're gonna point out later in these clips that i have that if John was such a scary talent, why isn't he a rock star? He did get an album on a major label. If he's really good, he could have turned that into a career <laughs> in music. <laughs> right. So obviously that did not work out. So now we're fast forward to the wrap-up show after this show. So they comment on the article. Now the wrap-up show, Fred Norris makes an appearance. He doesn't normally make appearances on the wrap-up show. But that's when Fred actually talks. So it was good to hear him on here. This is where everybody is wrong. I do not hate, I will go on record, I do not hate Stuttering John. However, I do feel that everybody's romancing his past. Uh, everybody forgets what a, I'm little, not. what a little dick he was. I'm not. It's funny because I was just talking to Jason Kaplan about that. And because uh, I was in there talking to Sal and blah, 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 blah. And I was trying to make up with him from yesterday. I said, listen, I know I said you're like Stuttering John, but you're not like Stuttering John. It's like, you're funny. Stuttering John is not. Anyway. John can be funny at times. When? Name one time he was funny. When he's not stuttering, when is he funny? When, when, the interviews he did were great. Even though you, yeah, got, even well, though you wrote, wrote them, the quick guy I got you. questions for and, him. And he, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Fred's like, name one time he was funny when he wasn't stuttering. Gary goes, well, the interviews he did. He's like, Fred, I wrote those. <laughs> That's why they were funny, dummy. So I love Fred there. He, he's really just speaking the truth. Yeah. John was not a funny guy. He never was. They made him funny. Multiple okay. conversations of Howard explaining to John that he's not funny. Oh, yeah. We I mean, we've documented that before, but that's also Fred saying it. So mm-hmm. this is nuts right here. And this is such a uh, you won't be surprised by this at all because of what we know about Suttering John Melendez here in 2023. Let's go back to Suttering John Melendez in the 90s. What was John doing? He was abusing any amount of power that he had. And I don't even think Howard knew about this. Sal was telling me, you know, John was the keeper of the gate on the phones. What will the, oh, uh, yeah. the phone screener? Sal told me that uh, uh, he called in one time and he said something negative about John, or not even that negative, but John took it as negative. He put Sal on two weeks probation, not taking your phone call for two weeks. Marianne from Brooklyn told me the same thing. So you have these regular callers calling into the Stern show. They say something negative about John. He stops putting them on the air. 
How petty? How petty yeah. can you possibly get? Yeah, dude. How thin skinned is he? Okay. He's got to let people know. Oh no, you don't talk shit about me. Then I won't let you through. What a pussy. He hasn't changed a single bit, nope. has he? Not su- I wasn't surprised by anything I heard, yeah. but I did light up in my seat as I wasn't there. So I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the John I know, too. It makes perfect sense. Okay, so now fast forward a couple of years after this. John goes on the Adam Carolla radio show, and he's promoting his movie and Tahiti Village, which we'll talk about. John has always got some kind of scam going, some kind of angle. He's working. We'll get into that. But Howard's pissed at John at this point because in this interview, and Adam was leading him in this direction, which is brilliant by Adam Carolla. As you know, I'm a fan of, uh, of Adam Carolla. And Adam actually was offered Artie's job. Adam has, has been on the Howard Stern Show many times. He sat in for weeks at a time before when they were looking for someone to replace Jackie. And Adam was there, you know, there, they, uh, Decided, yeah, they that, they decided he was the guy. The thing with Adam is that he is a host. He he hosts his own <laughs> morning radio show in LA and other markets, so he didn't want that gig. But anyway, Howard's pissed. Somebody played me an interview that Stuttering John gave on the Adam Carolla show, and I had no, I used to have no beef with Stuttering John. Uh-oh. Now I think he's a fucking asshole. Uh oh, what happened yeah. there? He could, he could stay a fucking way from me, a mile away. Uh oh, hello. Hi, he's a douchebag. So he's on Adam's show complaining about how poorly I treated him and didn't give any money. I'm like, you know, douchebag, you're lucky you had a first job in radio through me. This is the thing. (laughs) And Howard really drives this point home. But John has no gratitude. John thinks that everyone owes him shit. And so rather than look at it and say, Listen, I'm just thankful I have to be on the show. I mean, have you ever listened to Artie Lang? Artie Lang, who had a whole career before Howard Stern, he was on Mad TV, he was in movies, he was in the sitcom Norm. He had all this stuff going on. He goes on Howard Stern. If you ever hear Artie talk about Howard Stern after being on that show, he was so grateful for that opportunity. He feels bad he fucked it up. He understands how great that is to be on the Howard Stern show. John just thinks he deserved it all along. He's just like, yeah, I don't know. They didn't give me enough money. And the fucking assholes. Like, yeah. No, you got to be on the Howard Stern show. Turn right. that into something. I, he, you know how he is. If he offers to do something that he never ends up doing, like take care of your cats that don't exist while right. you're not in Florida, then yeah. he's, he's earned that, you know, that respect of something that he's done. And he thinks That he should have been that third chair. So, like, his offer to or desire to want to do it is as good as actually having done it in his mind. Correct. It's bizarre. It's it's a weird. Again, I think it's narcissistic behavior. It's it's definitely a personality flaw. Yeah, for sure. So this is Fred Norris again chiming in. As soon as they start talking about Fred's not a talkative guy, they start talking about stuttering John being an asshole. He's got a lot to say. <laughs> the reason, if anybody ever wants to know why I have a problem with John, uh-huh. that is the very reason right oh, there. His and logic cutting, is cutting weird. to the core. There is this arrogance that yeah. John has that he feels he is better than, that he deserves more than. He thinks he's a big talent. Yeah, I mean, that, that, if there was a beef, and by the way, if Jay Leno's paying him so much, why is he doing Tahiti Village? Right. You know, I mean, if there was a beef, he, yeah, yeah, he was, and then he was throwing him. He's always plugging. He's always, you know, he's always got some scam going. <laughs> yeah, but this uh, is to a T. I'm sorry, I, I Carl, real quick. I'm sorry, yeah. not just what is uh, Tahiti Village? Oh, I'll get into that. Okay, all right. Uh, so, well, we're going to play John plugging it on Adam's show, and I'll tell you okay. what that is because there's it's actually kind of funny. But I I hope Fred's paying attention to the dabble verse because this is exactly what Fred was saying. 15 years ago, 17 years ago, whatever this was, I think it was around 2008 that this all went down. And he's going, John thinks he's, he's this scary talent. And like every everything revolves around him. That's what he keeps saying about the Dabblers. He's the goat. <laughs> he's the reason. He's the, No, John, what? you're what? a buffoon. Yeah. <laughs> you're a buffoon. Yeah. That's why we're all ripping on you. It's not because you're a scary talent. It's not because you're the New York Yankees of podcasting. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. So this is great. We're not mincing any words here. Fuck you. You talentless <laughs> fuck. I mean, really. I mean, honestly, he stuttered. He's on there about how I didn't stick up for him. What a fucking asshole. I mean, really. I mean, just shut your fucking pie hole. 
Asswipe. I'm an ungrateful fuck. Love it. <laughs> All of that needed to be said and was said so perfectly. The other thing about these clips is I'm, you know, listening to Howard Stern from 2006, 2008. And that was when I think you and I were both avid listeners of the Howard Stern show, listening every day. And I miss it. It's such yeah. a great show. <laughs> it's so it's so compelling. It's so fun and interesting. And the thing that I noticed, one of the big differences as I'm pulling the clips from this version of the Howard Stern show versus current Howard Stern, and I go and I pull clips from that. Yeah. It's oh my so God. much dead air. It's so boring. The current state of Howard Stern, he moves along so slowly. The pacing of it is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it takes forever to say nothing. And back then, I'm pulling clip, clip, clip. He's like, fuck you, John. You're a talentless piece of shit. You had a stutter. Get over yourself. So yeah. it's fucking great. <laughs> I loved it back then. It was so much it, more fun. The current state of this Stern show is just so polar opposite of yeah. what made everybody like it. I just, I just don't understand. I, I just covered Imus on uh, All Apologies. Yeah. And I just what Howard has become is uh, it's disappointing is what it is well so how uh, hates the audience that he built he said this in that meeting that he had where he said our audience is all racists and homophobes so we want to bring in rosie o'donnell and we want to show them to not be homophobic and blah blah blah. like he hated his audience it reminds me of that beastie boys doc i'm sure you saw it yep where after License to Ill, you know, the Fight for Your Right to Party was supposed to be a joke song. And then all the Rob Gronkowski's of that era <laughs> took it as gospel and went, yeah, we do have to fight for our right to party. So the BC Boys had this fan base. It was all these like douchebag frat guys. They're like, that's not what we wanted at all. So they purposely reinvented themselves to get out of that. And I think Howard's doing the exact same thing. Now, the problem is is that it's turning off all the people like us who like Howard. So we're right. looking at it as a total negative. And he's not really pulling it off. Yeah, he's, get, he's getting celebrity interviews, but he's, they aren't good interviews. He's just not kissing comedy. their asses. It's not comedy right. anymore. Yeah, He's just kissing the asses of, celeb- of A-list celebrities now, and it's obnoxious. All right. This is John now on Adam Carolla explaining that Howard was cheap. But let me hear it. Did you ever think, expect, or hope that the boss man would kick something down to you? Of course, Adam. I mean, that. I mean, listen. You know, I love Howard and all, but my biggest. No, you don't. Has always been on that show that you know they just don't take care of people financially, and it was. So it was my job to take care of John financially. Oh, by the way, I mean the the big the big rap against John with his yeah. his uh, his traveling comedy review. Yeah. I didn't think the truth can finally be told, and I don't know if Jim has ever spoken to you about this or not. But other comedians used to come up to me like after. And then John, John didn't pay them. John right, got right. the lion's share. He came out was Huck Finn. Basically said, okay, here's our next comedian. These guys did all the heavy lifting. John took the lion's share of the money and paid them like 100 yeah, bucks Mr. Per Generous. Brilliant observation by Fred right there because John loves to complain. Howard was so cheap. He was making so much money. They could have given me more money. Meanwhile, John was doing the Sittering John and Friends tour with Jim Florentine, who's dating Robin at this time. Mm-hmm. And Fred makes it a point to say, Jim's not the one who told me this, but other comics have told me they paid him like shit. I think Nick DiPaolo probably is one of those guys because I've heard that from him. But so John was taking most of the money and doing none of the work. Right. He just put his name on this thing. They sold out a theater and then all the comics had to make it entertaining for the mm-hmm. audience. And John kept the money. So I, I love that John loves to play this game of he's so amazing. We'll get into some stuff. In a little while, he's talking about his charity work and all the stuff that he does. So he's giving back. Yeah, it's it's insane. That whatever John's so delusional, his delusions go above and beyond anything that we could comprehend. So you get to a point where you go, This can't be real. I don't yeah. know anyone in my life who operates like this. This can't be a real person. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's why the devil verse is thriving right now. Because no one can believe that any of this is real. So, again, Howard goes on to explain it was never meant to be a full-time job. It was a beginner job. And Howard even says, he goes, he's complaining about how much money we paid him. 
and you know, you know Howard's rap. He made four dollars an hour his first gig, or two hundred bucks a month, or whatever the fuck it, money he made back in the seventies when he first started. He goes, "Did I sit there and complain about how much money I made? No, I made the money that I made, got better at what I did, and then sent tapes around, moved to different markets, moved on, kept going from different station to different station until I got offers of a lot more money. That's how you do it. That's how you move ahead of your career. Yeah, you don't just start working at your first job. Just go. Well, I know you used to pay me four bucks an hour, but how about uh, two point five mil a year now? That's, that's never how that works. No. <laughs> well, he got over to the." To the tonight, he made that move. He did. That was a, that was a level. There was a level up, she and level up. he did not execute the opportunity. He yep. didn't make. He didn't make the most of that and turn it into whatever the stuttering John show that comes on after Leno. That's what he should have done, and he couldn't. He could have done a lot of different things. Yes, he, he didn't pull off anything. Because now we see him sitting in his disgusting, disgusting apartment. I would pay, John, if you're listening to me, I think I would pay $2,500 to get a tour of your apartment. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, don't clean up. I know you won't. But I think you turn the camera on, start walking around. I want to see what's doing in there. Yeah. Like MTV Cribs style yes. uh, tour of Stuttering John. Fascinating. MT- MTV, reach out to Stuttering John and set that up. I didn't pull this clip because it's too long. But the other day, he gets up and takes a shit in the middle of his show. And he thinks he's being entertaining. He's yelling, oh, fucking hell, my roids. Bro. You know, he's yelling and whatever. So it's annoying. And then you hear him go to the fridge and you just hear bottles rattling around. I can't tell if he's tripping on them, if he's pushing them out of his way. It's so loud. The one thing you don't hear is water running from the faucet. (laughs) Yeah, you don't hear him wash his hands. (laughs) You don't hear him wash his hands. You do hear him get a beer. And just him moving around through his apartment, it sounds like it's a chore. Like there's so much shit everywhere. By the time he sits down, he's winded. He's got his pillow now because of his hemorrhoids. He can't sit comfortably and meanwhile he wants to fight producer joe what the <laughs> fuck he's got box after box of tonight show watches that he's trying to pawn <laughs> yeah right yeah. it's a collector's item there's only five thousand. <laughs> all right so all right I, I got it getting back to john thinking that he was a underpaid super talent on the Howard Sturge show. And then he'd go do appearances and I'd plug them and then I got him uh, help get him a radio show at K Rock. I mean, you, you know what? I, I would have given my left nut to have my own radio show at K Rock when I was his age. Uh-huh. That don't happen by accident. He also got a lot of benefits from the um, show. You ended up getting like a couple of movie roles. His, yeah, his I mean, I mean, you, know, you do what like you can. Good stuff. You do what you can. But this idea that he has that he was sort of like underpaid super talent. We wrote him a bunch of questions and he went out on a red carpet and asked questions that we wrote. I mean, that was it. And he answered our phone. Right. And I'm, I'm all about that. But the thing is that, you know, now to go around bad me, no, dude, you were a guy, an intern who I got a job for. Just say thank you and shut your fucking mouth. And it's interesting to hear him recapping all the things that the Howard Stern show. There's some things that Howard did for him directly. But there's so many things that happened to John because of the Howard Stern show. Obviously, we talked about the record deal, and the music video, but movie cameos. He was on Wings. He was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Like All these different things happened to him because of his notoriety from the Howard Stern show. The fact that he's complaining about it after the fact is insane. Yeah. He's such an asshole. Count yourself lucky, stupid. I want to point something out. Dang Lizard in the chat says, um, who was it again that needed money for medical reasons that, that Suttering John said about certain was so cheap he didn't give money while he himself didn't give any money either? So um, Scott Salem's wife now, there is a bigger story here that I happen to know about, and I've been trying to get this guy on who knows all about it to come on the show and talk about it. He's reluctant. A lot of people are reluctant to be part of this uh, world. But Scott Salem, Scott the Engineer, is a fucking liar. He's oh. a fucking liar. He had medical coverage. He had the medical. He was he was covered under serious. And this whole idea that he was broke and they couldn't afford treatment and woe is me and Howard's not treating me right was all a fucking scam. Scott's really? another one. Yes. Scott's a piece of shit. He's another one of these guys who's looking to scam the audience, looking to scam people, shits on Howard. 
And well, listen, yeah, that's that. I mean, scamming the audience is one thing, but like painting Howard with that like uh, yep. um, unsympathetic brush, like yep. making him seem like a villain in that way, like he was unwilling to help somebody with cancer. That's pretty right. deplorable. It's deplorable the way that he says it, and it's just not true. Hmm. So Scott's a piece of shit. We'll save that for another time. We're not talking about Scott today. But someday, someday we will. Okay. Ralph calls in. Of course, if you don't know the Howard Stern show well, Ralph is Howard's stylist. Howard's boyfriend. And possibly boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. So Ralph calls into the show. Again, Ralph does not like Suttery John. Yeah, Ralph, go ahead. Oh, my God. Finally. Yeah, I'll fuck the this truth kid. Finally, comes out, huh? Realize what a piece of shit he is, and he has always been. No one fucking forced him to stay at that job. If you're paying five dollars or five million, you know what? You don't like it? Fucking move on. Well, that's the other point right. I want to make. Was looking to hire that yeah, piece of shit. I didn't. I didn't sit and say to him, John, I have to have you. I mean, yeah. it was. It was like he kept saying to me, I want to be at the show. Can you get me some money? I go. I'll go talk to Tom, and I did. Wasn't he an intern who should have moved on? Yeah. Yes, correct. Can we get Ralph on WATP? That Do I need awesome. to reach out to Ralph? Is he still associated with Howard? Somebody After, knows. I know. I should reach out to him. After that, Howard even says, he goes, and what happened to the stutter? It's like all of a sudden, you know, he's on Adam Carolla's show. He's not oh, doing yeah. the stutter anymore. Like all the stuff that John used to do that made him interesting. All of a sudden, it's not happening anymore. So this is them explaining. John was paid what he was worth. And John, if you were important to the show, maybe you would have made more. Uh, exactly. You're really not that important, you fucking stuttering retard. <laughs> well, that's kind of the point too. Yeah. You were kind you of paid what you were deal? worth. How and trust me, I mean, trust me. I wonder if, if if Jay Leno isn't sitting and reevaluating that salary he gave you. Yeah. According to Mike Walker, it, yes. Yes, he did. He, he <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> That came out after this conversation that Mike Walker found out from a uh, private meeting at the Tonight Show. Jay was none too happy they made that hire. So I just think that's really funny. It is great. Now, Tim Sabian jumps in. <laughs> so now Tim Sabian comes in. You know, he's an executive at Sirius <laughs> at this time. And he's got some things to say about this non-appreciative asshole stuttering John because they're currently working at this time, 2008, they're working on, back then, they would do all these spotlight specials. So on Howard 101, not only do they rerun old episodes, but they put together these different specials. And it'd be like, hey, let's remember Eric the actor, or let's go back and remember Beetlejuice, whatever. And so, notice I mentioned two whack packers. So they were going to do <laughs> one for Stuttering John, and Tim was starting to work on that. What is it? So we're working on a special. Uh, David Heights' team is working on a special doing yeah. a Stuttering John Spotlight. Yeah, take it off. initially, take it off. Well, initially, well, initially he said, "I'll do it, but you have to run a spot for my movie right. once an hour." Yeah, yeah. No. And I says, "Bex Beer, our biggest advertiser, you know, doesn't but, run a spot." Movie, once a the movie's going yeah. though. It's, I, I seen the trailer for it. It looks like it looks like fucking amateur. So hour. it gets. Yeah. Hold on, <laughs> this this is fucking crazy right here. Yeah, John is such an asshole. They're going to do a spotlight. Of Stuttering John and the Howard Stern Show to run on Sirius XM. John is employed at the Tonight Show, but as you can hear on Adam Kroll, and we're going to hear more clips of him on there coming up, John's constantly plugging shit. He's trying to promote different things he's doing. The movie, his stand-up gigs, Tahiti Village. So the fact that Tim Sabian reaches out and says, hey, John, can we get you to record some things? We're going to put together this package for you. And John goes, I will under these conditions. And he wants a promo for one too many every hour. I don't know what the advertising cost would be for that. As Tim just said, Beck's Beer, their biggest sponsor, isn't getting that. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of advertising yeah. that John needs to just do them, not even a favor, something that would help John out if he saw the big picture here. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking ass. Doesn't so run a his spot movie. Once. The movie's gone. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say it's so funny how people are coming out of the woodwork to line up to shit yeah. on this guy. Isn't this funny? That's Both times that we were playing them talking about Suttering John, all of a sudden, Ralph's calling in, Tim's coming into the <laughs> studio, Fred turns his mic on for the first time in two weeks. Like, everyone yeah. wants hit on this shit. <laughs> Gary's in there. 
you know, doesn't uh, run a spot. Movie, once. The movie's going, yeah. though. It's, I, I've seen the trailer for it. It looks like it looks like fucking amateur. So hour. it gets down to the point. I says, John, I says, all the things that I've helped you out with over the years at WISP, at WCKG, promoting your comedy you shows really and did. so forth. I says, help me out. Help me out. You know, I says, I'm asking you as a favor. He goes, Tim, I'm appalled you would even ask me that. I'm like, give me a break. It's very full Yeah, himself. well, the people now, who usually know what other people can you, give them are that's very, the, That's the other thing. People don't, and I'm sure stingy. there are other guys like Tim. Why are you I mean, begging that asshole? Yeah, really. Tim was really I, I good said to John. I, I said, look, I said, help me out with this. And he says, I'm appalled that you would even ask a personal favor. I'm like, bite me. Oh, hey, Tim, you know what off. David Hyde should be working on? Removing John from everything in the tape. Yeah, <laughs> for that. Yeah, really, I mean, tell him to right. fuck himself. Yeah, so. yeah, what an ungrateful asshole. I was <laughs> want to point out my buddy uh, John Marlowe in the chat is saying that the Stuttering John Spotlight did air uh, around the time the One Too Many came out. And John did get to plug his movie when he did record stuff for Sirius, yes. but they did not run those ads. And uh, John Marlowe says, unlike the spotlights for Billy and Jackie, they crammed John's spotlight into two days. <laughs> so he did not get uh, as much as I think the other guys who were a big part of the show. Well, that's interesting. In you're going to live by the sword and die by the sword with that kind of request because have you ever seen like a, a real like big ad push for something that is obviously terrible the more the more times you see something the more you're going to realize that it sucks and yeah. it's something that you're not interested in. instead of you taking what they're offering and piquing the audience's curiosity and then may, them maybe checking it out you want to like cram it down their throat till they are perfectly they realize that it is shit and that's that's what right. would happen with one too many. That's just, right. I don't I don't have to see five commercials to know that that movie sucks. Well, you just heard Howard say he saw the trailer and it looks terrible. Right. And so fast forward a few uh, minutes after that, and it turns out there's more to it than just having a shitty trailer. John, in the advertisement for it showed him asking celebrities questions for the Howard Stern show. Yeah, and by the way, John's... By the way... Since about I'm such how a, much he learned about radio Since I'm so not here. supportive, hey, John, your movie trailer begins with clips of the, of the stuff I own, the, the Howard Stern show interviews. Did you ask my permission, come, come bag, when Tim asked you for a fucking favor? Did you ever think about that, scumbag? You're stealing my fucking material? You didn't give him permission for that? No, he didn't ask. Oh. Just took it. So fuck off, asshole. Sue him. How funny is that? Here, I'll say sue him. How funny is that? That John was stealing copyrighted material that he did not own and using that to promote his movie. Meanwhile, he's starting to sue Tukey over a video oh, that he has yeah. nothing to do with <laughs> over copyrighted material. But John's quick to steal other people's stuff That's when the it benefits first, him. The first page out of the Stuttering John yep. playbook is to spotlight Howard Stern. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Howard talks about that, too. I didn't pull all the clips, obviously. But the reason why John thinks that he wasn't treated correctly is because Howard doesn't, doesn't want his name on stuff that John's doing that sucks. So these guys would try to get away with stuff where they'd be like, Howard Stern Show, uh, Stuttering John and Friends, oh, yeah. and do these comedy shows. And Howard's like... Don't put my fucking name on that. I'm not part of this thing. Yeah. That's your thing. Oh, and you know, was... they, they act like they're being treated unfairly. It's like, no. Howard Stern is very careful about what you put his name on. Yeah, he would get... I remember him getting furious every time. And rightfully like, so. would try and uh, ride his coattails. With... Dude, if you called your show whore these apologies, I'd murder <laughs> you. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> Okay, just, so that's gonna be my new my new uh, slogan. Just as good as WATP. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so this is um, the, again complaining that that Howard didn't give him money. He always said he doesn't want to get involved in people's salaries, but you know what, man? At some point, I think you do. Oh, oh John! Oh. John got oh, involved. John, 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 thinks, John, John knows what I should do. Oh, thanks, John. You fucking asshole. He's been I, I didn't look at him bitterly then, but the only problem I had then. was then when you w w would go out and do these ancillary gigs, right. he, 
he would then be angry that you're doing them. Right. Then, when was I ever angry that you're doing them? Because no, you, you, you know what he's talking about. Talking about when he wanted to write a book and put how, from the Howard Stern show. No, yeah, like when he Howard would get Stern something comedy. and he would totally be using yeah. material from the show or I mean, when you he know, went on having tour, to slap your name when he went on, across the thing. When he went on tour and brought everybody from the show with him right. and, then, uh, and did this shit show and then made, made, made me look bad because people thought I had something to do with it. You should have let him do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I'll just sell my own. I, I don't see him walk, walking around with the Tonight Show cast uh, doing shows. <laughs> okay, so everything we were just talking about all summed up in that clip. That's great. This is my favorite ISO. Producer Chris, get this on the board. We need this on the board. Shut the fuck up, oh. asswipe, and suck my cock. <laughs> Fantastic. When I said... Howard Stern has lost it. This is what I mean. You're not going to hear this on the Howard Stern show talking about yeah. stuttering John. I would. I wish. Can we please let Howard know what's going on with the devil verse? I would love for him to come out in 2023 with this take. Shut the fuck up, asswipe, and suck my cock. Now, because John is going on the Adam Carolla show and bad mouthing Howard, he's actually it's so selfish because at this time. Beth and Susanna are still friends. You know, I mentioned earlier the reason why they would get together is because the women were friends with each other. So they would do double dates and stuff like that. Now, he's making it very difficult because Susanna is still going to be calling up Beth and, hey, we're going to be back in New York and blah, blah, blah. And then Howard's just like, this guy's motherfucking yeah. me on the Adam Carolla show. I don't want anything to do with this guy. Yeah, I don't want this fuck over at my house. So what John is doing by just being an ungrateful douche is he's actually fucking it up for his wife with a friendship that she has, a connection. Don't fucking call my girlfriend. Don't have your wife call. And really, I got to tell Beth, would you stop with the fucking phone calls to Susanna? Yeah, I mean, you can't tell John to have Susanna stop. No, I, I mean, really. That's your... Uh... This guy's a fucking tool maniac. What an ingrate. Yeah. So he's fucking it up for his wife. And let's just remember, guys, John is bad at everything he does. <laughs> what an ingrate. I mean, really, just obnoxious. Just remember where you came from. And someone gave you a shot. And, it, and if the shot was so bad, you leave because you'd be a man. And you go, you know, and you go and you go do something else. John had said to me, he, he had to... If his record had taken off and had been any good, he would have been a rock star. Right. If any of that had been any good. Or his acting. Remember you used to do those little acting gigs? Yeah, he's horrible. It was all horrible. Because he was good at stuttering and asking the questions we wrote for him. Did anybody begrudge him doing Tony and Tina's wedding? No. no. When did I begrudge him a thing? Right. So this is the thing is that John had tons of opportunities. He was, I mean, they plugged Atlantic Records and Howard Stern both plugged the shit out of his band. It sucked. Nobody cared about it. So it didn't go anywhere. He got to open for other bands, which I know he's very proud of, but it's not that impressive. You should be <laughs> doing your own shows. Yeah. That's how that should work. Now, you asked earlier about Tahiti Village. So now yeah. we're going to listen to John on Adam Carolla. And Adam's trying to wrap up the interview. And John's like, oh, but hold on. I got to tell you one too many. And I got to tell you about this thing and that thing. I just got to plug this. And th so you hear that John's going to be like, I just got to plug this. Listen to the words he uses. He uses the word legit or legitimate, which is a weird thing to say in an advertisement or a plug for something. It makes me feel like. Should I be wary of this? I just got to plug this, and this is great for uh, you and all your listeners, and uh, it's totally legit. If they call this number now, they get a uh, three-day, two-night complimentary hotel stay in Las Vegas, and also uh, two tickets to a Las Vegas show. And you have the number? Yeah, and I'm going to do a screening in Vegas. So, uh, it, oh, it, wow. Let's get there real quick. How many things can you plug in one sentence? Yeah, and, and, you know, he's making a pretty good chunk of change over there tonight. Does he have to be like... Yeah, exactly. Why is he whoring himself yeah. out, Mr. Moneybags? Can't stop what, 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 what's with... Uh, What's with the stutter, too? Where'd it go? Well, it's here. He's stuttering a little yes. bit. A little bit. So uh, call this number, 866-50-GET-IT. That's 866-50-G-E-T-I-T. -E and it's great, man. It's a free room, three-day, two-night, complimentary hotel stay, and, uh, you know, two tickets to a Vegas show. And it's, uh, you know, it's a cool thing. And uh, soon in April, I'll be doing a screening. I hope you come. And I, I, will, come. Uh, I will. I, I defy any human being to sit through that. <laughs> okay. So he's trying to get, that was the other funny thing too, is he goes, we're doing a screening for my movie, One Too Many, on the 10th of April, and then on the 15th, it comes out on DVD. 
<laughs> straight to DVD is yeah. this movie you want too many. So I'm still not clear what he's he's just plugging some random Vegas deal. Okay. So Tahiti Village Resort. And this goes back a ways that John's promoting this thing. And you hear him say three days and two nights. Right there, I'm going, whoever promotes how many days they are at a hotel? Because they yeah. have to check out by 11 a.m. Yeah. They're cutting it as a day. That's Sweet. An old, that's an old game show uh, trick. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> when it's you win okay. something on match game. So. Yeah. All so, right, I see. So th- uh, let me just get this straight. Yes. This is an off there. I'm assuming Tahiti Village said, you can have this deal if you plug this deal to while well, you're like plugging things like no. i feel like he's it's he, worse than that he's, oh it's worse than that it's that, worse that, than that that's the only reason i could think that he would bother plugging that as if he it, was getting it for free it's worse than that andy okay. what it is right. tahiti village as far as i know this is still going on it's one of these things where you, you notice how he says two tickets to a vegas show like whatever the fuck that means yeah so it is a timeshare it's one okay. of these things where they bring you in. It's high pressure sales. Hey, man, we're giving you two nights free, so you just got to sit here for eight hours today and hear this sales pitch until you say yes, or else we just keep you in here. There's a great South Park about that. Yeah. So there's a great uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia about it too. Yes, it's a timeshare <laughs> scam. Where so they he's just, they pressure time you. Shares now. So basically, what's happening is John is going to get a commission on anyone that he brings to. This Tahiti village who signs up for a timeshare. What the fuck? That's the scam. This is, this is the guy who works for the Tonight Show at this time. He doesn't need to be doing shit like this. And this is right. the point that Howard and Robin are making. Like, what are you doing? Have some dignity. <laughs> he, has turn everything, I... he has to turn everything into money. And look at him now. He's flat fucking broke. How did that happen? He is doing so many things. All right. Last clip I have here. This is the salary talk. Oh, here he is talking about his starting salary at K Rock because because he was such an incredible talent. Starting, he was nothing. I mean, the truth is, Adam, and you know how you know radio. Well, you get a lot more than I ever did, but you know, for me, my first salary at K Rock was uh, ten thousand dollars a year. Oh, yeah. oh what that's was crazy. He doing? How would they overlook him, Howard? What was your starting salary in radio? Well, first of all. Uh, it was my radio show. Yeah, he was actually I mean, on the, the radio. The matter for is, when I'm, he did, the point he, I'm he, trying to make, starting, nobody no, no, no. starts off making money. No, his money. starting salary, he's lying. His starting salary was free. That's he, right. He was an yeah. intern. He started paying him for something he did for he free. Said, he said to me, I enjoy myself here. I want to hang around. Is Can you get me some money? I said, I don't know if they'll pay any interns. I said, if you want. So they gave him 10 grand. And I said, John, I wouldn't make a life I wouldn't make a life plan of he staying here. He doesn't realize what a gift he got. I mean, yeah. I, and you know, and this isn't just blowing smoke up your ass. It's like the fact that he was an intern. Where in this universe does an intern become a part of the, the most major radio program in all of history? Right. And that was in 1990. See, they can't believe how ungrateful he is. They can't believe yeah. it. They can't wrap their heads around it. I, I still can't. I know. Just Check it Chaka Khan in the chat says, friend owns a Tahiti Village timeshare. It's gross. Yeah. All right. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm sure it's not a scam. I'm sure it's wonderful. And what else did I say earlier? Uh, I'm sure Scott Salem's a great guy. And uh, it's really sad that that happened to his wife. All right. Now we've cleaned up all the disclaimers we need to get through. <laughs> Tahiti Village Andy. is full of uh, uncleaned litter boxes and empty Coors cans. No, that's John's house you're thinking of. Who are these podcasts? W-H-O-O-R-E-S